Hey everybody, let's go down to the shop and build a teleprompter. So last night, I was trying to shoot a video where it was about a two minute long monologue and it took me, I can't even tell you how many takes, <clears throat> 50, 60 takes to get through that. Uh, I decided that what I really needed to fix the problem that I was having is a teleprompter. So that's what we're going to try to build today. Got a few parts here. We've got a picture frame. It's got a glass in it that we can use. It's not beam splitter glass, but we'll see, it might work. Got a little hinge to mount this to another piece of wood so it can sit at a 30 degree angle. And a bunch of parts that I thought would be good at the hardware store and some crappy cold rolled steel that we're gonna weld together for some kind of fake camera rails. But these are gonna be our version of camera rails. So let's see what we can figure out. So I've laid this out a little bit and what I think I need is 11 by 16 inch piece of wood. This is a little bit flimsy, so I'm gonna to try to find a piece of half inch plywood. I don't know that I have any around here. I'm trying to avoid using MDF on this project, but I have so much MDF in the shop, half inch and three quarter, that I'll probably end up using it. But what's really gonna happen here, get rid of that stuff. So the iPad is gonna sit right on this thing. I'll maybe put a little channel around there so it sits nice in there. And I have my little hinges. I'm gonna hinge it right on the back of here to this, whatever the piece of wood is, so I can lift it up and down. I'm not sure exactly what angle. I've read 30 degrees is good, but we don't know just yet. So I wanna make it adjustable so I can change that angle. That's what the hinges are for. And then I'll probably laser cut a piece of acrylic or something that's got some pins, some holes and some pins so I can just pin it on one side and then just, you know, do that. So we'll see if that works. Let's try to find a piece of half inch MDF. All right, no luck finding a piece of half inch plywood, but we've got plenty of MDF. So we're gonna run this off real quick and just uh, make the 11 by 16. We may have to modify that, but that's how we roll here. I'm just gonna cut it big and then keep cutting parts off until it's the right size. But I know it needs to be 11 by 16. So engage. Readjust for the 16 inch side. Gotta make sure you have a clean edge to run up against the fence there. Engage. Realize I probably should have brought an iPad with me so I get the right dimensions. I'll have to look them up. I usually don't trust dimensions from dimensional drawings that I find on the internet. It's uh, usually pretty close, like sometimes it's very good, but every once in a while you find a dimensional drawing that you pull off the internet that is just not right. So I always like to have the exact item that I'm working with to try to fit it when I have to build some custom bracketry or something like that. So. Do not have an iPad today, unless there's one laying around here, which I do not believe there is. So I scrounge around the shop a little bit. I found a hurricane bolt. These things are pretty great. Let's see if we can get it focused on here. It's got wood thread on the outside and machine thread on the inside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole dead center of this thing, throw that in there. It's quarter 20 on the inside. What do you know? It just happened to have that laying around the shop. So if we have a quarter 20 bolt, 
which this is the exact same thread. Quarter 20 is the threading that is on a camera mount. So, yep, it's the right, the right business there. So once I put this in here, I should be able to just put the uh, plate from my tripod on there and it'll, it'll mount. So when drilling through your finished piece of work, you reuse your scrap here, pop that down on there. So when you drill through this, it's got something on the bottom and it's not gonna just break apart. So let's just do this. Should be through there. And we are, see? Nice and clean. So we want this side on the bottom. So we're gonna screw it in through the top. Try to get this nice and square. You gotta put pressure, when you see it start to slide a little bit on the next revolution, Try to push down on that side a little bit. You just go slow with these things and they'll go in straight. So now I can see it's tilting this way a little bit. Back it off and I'm gonna put pressure down here. Get that going straight. There's probably a proper way to do this. It's a lot easier, but I don't know it. I'm sure somebody in the peanut gallery down here is going to tell me what's what and how to do it right. So, welcome to it, buddy. Let me know how to do this because every time I do it, it's a pain in my butt. So, help me out. Back that off a little bit. All right, so unfortunately, the plate that I need to put on here is holding you up. So, I'm going to have to go off tripod here for a minute and see if that works. So it looks like it's gonna work. And yeah, I have maybe the chintziest tripod that you can possibly buy, but it holds it still. I'm not doing a bunch of movement with it. I don't need a fluid head or anything like that. So it'll work, it'll hold it still. Oftentimes when I'm building something, this is how I go about it. I incrementally build until I have the final product or contraption or whatever kind of thing I've cobbled together is. But you know, you just start out with a piece of wood, put a hole in it, put the thing in it, make sure it mounts. Now let's solve the next problem. So we're just breaking everything down into little tiny problems. I kind of messed with this in CAD and made sure that it would kind of go together right, but I didn't plan before I came here. I thought about it. I knew I'd need some hinges. I knew I'd need some glass and something to hold the glass. I got some steel in case we need to weld something in there. Uh, one thing that we're gonna have to do is if we pretend this is the camera. The camera's gotta sit up higher on here. I can't just mount it down here if this is the lens because it's too low. So we're gonna have to raise the camera up a little bit and I think that's what we're going to use the steel for. I like to just have some material around and I usually have extra material because I just bought this four feet four foot piece of two inch by what is that eighth cold rolled steel but if you've watched the camera bracket video I already had some of that. I don't know how much I had but this is almost exactly what we would need. What's next? Let's hinge this on. You know, I was just starting to cut this package open and it made me think that it's stupid. It's got the plastic all the way inside but sandwiched in between here. Uh, I have my knife that I've been carrying for 15 years, the bench made, I love it. And it'll slice through this no problem. But my kid is an EMT or almost training to be an EMT, applying for jobs now, really needs just to do the certification. But I uh, called him the other day and he asked, for Christmas for some parts. Parts, not parts, equipment. So 
what he's looking for is uh, stethoscope, EMT shears, or what do they call them, trauma shears, and uh, uh, blood pressure cuff. So I looked around and I, you know, obviously was attracted to the shears because it's a tool and it's pretty cool. And I found that Leatherman makes shears, trauma shears, they're called the Raptor. They're amazing, I bought them. They should be here today, maybe Tuesday, I don't know. Amazon is being very slow because all the smoke in the air. They're shutting down their warehouses because of the smoke, so we're not getting anything from Amazon. Hopefully I get them today. It just made me think about it because I'm, it'd be great. It would just plow right through this, but let's see. Uh, got the old mic in the pocket, so that's not going to happen there. So we said we wanted to move this back a little bit so we have some room. I could be center punching these, but I haven't seen my center punch in a while. After I did that last big contract, I kind of packed up a lot of my tools out of the shop so I could have them at home. Cause I swore, I put the center punch in there, but now I can't find it. No idea what this material on this chancy CVS brand frame is. Let's see if we can take a little knock off of there. Oh, good, it's wood. That's what I was hoping. It was in the bin that said aluminum frame, but I felt it and it was clearly not aluminum. No, stay. Every once in a while, you're gonna hear some really awesome music. Cause right outside my shop is an alleyway. And right across is a little thing I call, I like to call heroin cove. Cause you walk around out there and there's freaking needles everywhere. It's nasty. Some cool music every once in a while. There it is. That's going to work. And I probably won't even fasten that glass back down because since it's gonna be at an angle, it's gonna let gravity do that. And I'm gonna to wanna to be able to pop it out and clean it because I will be shooting video through that glass daily. All right, so I've decided that I'm just going to design a part that I can cut on the laser cutter to hold the mirror up. I'm just gonna use some little nails and drill, uh, not drill, but laser cut some holes in a piece, couple of pieces of acrylic, put screws in on the bottom and then the pins and the acrylic is bendable. So I just bend it, adjust it to the right peg, put it on. Let's just do that. This is going to be very simple. So here we are in Fusion 360, going to get this file ready for the laser cutter. Pretty easy to do. Uh, just need one sketch really. Create our sketch. I took a couple of measurements, so we want something that's going to be like, I don't know, let's say one inch wide and seven inches long. There we go. So we have that. We're going to put some fillets on it because you have to to make it look cool. It's like one of the rules, right? I 
There we go. So let's put a hole right down here at the bottom for our screw. Let's call that a three millimeter hole. And we'll just make them all three millimeter. What the heck? And we can put a bunch in here. So one quick easy thing that we can do is we can take that hole and we can create a pattern. We'll create a rectangular pattern. We want one direction. I never remember exactly how to do this, so I just kind of play with it until it works. It's pretty easy. Uh, let's do 10 positions. Distance apart. 12.7. Oh, I have to select my object. I thought I already selected it. Okay, so now we want to do, what did I say, 10? Let's do 10. And these increments don't really matter. But maybe we should do more than that. Let's do 14. Sixteen? Sixteen? Sure, sixteen. Okay. Ah, we missed the fillet here. So that's all. That's what it's going to look like when it comes out of the laser cutter. So we're going to go over to our sketch, save as DXF. This is on our USB drive. Ha! And number two. Done. So here we go. These are pretty ugly, but they're gonna work. I'm just gonna put them somewhere around there and then you know, we'll have the ability to do something like that. So let's just say that that's the maximum. We can do a center here. Yeah, let's do that. So that's roughly 10. So let's go five up and that's where we'll put those. So my air compressor came on, so that was going to be too loud and you wouldn't be able to hear me, so I just continued working. Uh, I only got one side done. I did drill the holes, but now you can see in the frame. I'm going to put the next one on. And again, we're just putting stuff together until it works. These aren't going to actuate a million times, so it doesn't have to be most precise, pretty thing in the world. I'm probably gonna set this thing up once at the house, at the studio, and that's it. So, let's see. We wanna be able to go full 90 degrees, we should be somewhere in this area here. Do I have a square here? I've got the door open, lighting's a little bit different. But I said, do I have a square here? Yes, I have a square here. I always keep a square around. This is the one that I usually keep around. This was my dad's. I think it was old when he got it. It's awesome. 
I found it, it was as rusty as could be, and I cleaned it all up, and it works great. It's still got the scribe. And maybe you didn't know this, these squares usually have hardened steel scribes. So once you set up, if you're working on steel, you can set that up and you can scribe right in there. That is an amazing feature, but it don't work here. So this is the square I was looking for. I'm gonna keep that like that. Get this somewhere in the center. Got a mic. All right, now just need to find some pen that's gonna work that we can drill a little hole in there and put a pen in there. I found a treasure looking for a pen to use here. So when we are back at the shop, if you're watching this channel for any amount of time, you're gonna see my digital multimeter. And just to show you how long I've had that thing, I just found this in my toolbox. Look at that. It is a 3.5 meg floppy disk with some kind of crappy software on it for the digital multimeter. Which just reminds me that thing's got a serial port on it. So here we are back at the workbench. Uh, we had a little bit of a time warp there because I ran out of battery and I didn't bring another battery with me. So way to go, right? Uh, we've got the completed unit. I've got the sheet of glass here that I just need to clean up. I figured I'd talk to you guys while I was doing that. So, at the shop, I don't remember the last thing that we did was, but I ended up discovering a bunch of things and had to make a couple of changes. Uh, some of the changes were that it was too heavy. So you'll see in a minute that I had to lighten the load quite a bit. And it was off balance. Remember when I put the, uh, the center in there? Well, I was thinking the camera and the iPad would weigh similar, but they do not. The camera is heavier, so it wanted to tilt back because like it, I also said, I have probably the crappiest tripod ever that I'm trying to do this with. Um, so it would, it would tilt. We didn't want that to happen. So I changed the position of the hurricane bolt, hurricane nut, yeah, hurricane, hurricane nut in there. And it seems to work a lot better now that it's been lightened. I have some lens cleaners here. I'm just going to wipe this thing down. It was in the shop, lots of sawdust, really nasty. this thing to be as clean as we can get it. Like that booger right there, we want that out of there. Now that we got this relatively clean, we can set aside. How's that look? Oh, I see boogers. I think it's on the other side. One, can you see any in there? There it is. Yeah, what is that? razor blade on that one. Anyways, move this aside and I'll show you the unit. So 
So this is what finally turned out. Uh, these are adjustable, so we can have many different positions, so we can try to find the best angle. And it can fold down for convenience. Not that I would ever do that because it's just gonna get set up in the studio and that's kind of it. But I wanted to fold this over so you can see I put a Manfrotto head on here and I've got the plate so it just the camera just fits right in there. I've also got another head that I bought that is holding the camera up here. Remember, if you remember in the original video, I put this guy on there. That worked for a minute, but I had to screw it into the camera every time I wanted to mount this in this position. So now I have the two shoes or the plates, whatever they're called, super easy to swap out. And on the bottom, we've got the plate for the Chensi tripod and it works. The other thing that we had to do was need a shroud. So I grabbed an old t-shirt, cut it in half, left a little neck on it. This is gonna go, left a little neck. This is gonna go around the lens and I'll put a rubber band or something. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Put a rubber band or something around it and uh, this will keep most of the light out, so would you stop camera? All right, whatever, hates this black. So that's gonna fit like so. It's gonna go around this. And in the studio, I have a big light right above the camera. It's the lighting for me. And I had to cut a piece of cardboard and I'm going to have to build some barn doors around this on all three sides. And maybe I'll paint it black or something on the inside just to lose a little bit of reflectivity on that. But that's it. We'll see how it works in a little bit. My iPad is charging. Here is the finished teleprompter. You can see I had to build barn doors all the way around it because I was getting quite a bit of reflection on the glass for my lighting. It's just cardboard and I didn't even black it out on the inside, but it seems to work just fine. On the back here, we have our mounting plate for the camera. Clearly the camera is not here because it's over there. We've got a t old t-shirt here to black out on the back. We've got a sleeve in it, slips right over the lens. And I wanna to try to show you some of the text. You can see the iPad down there and the text is reflected up. It's probably pretty dark for you, but it works for my needs. If you like this video and you like what you saw here, please hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new videos are available. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.